we've seen the application of neuroscience in many different areas, from marketing um, to the development of new products. When it comes to the field of neuroleadership, what does this uh, new technology, brain imaging, tell us about the relationship between the leader and the follower? Yeah, it's an up-and-coming field, something I'm really interested in, something we're doing a lot of research in right now. Um, and there are a number of uh, ways to look at this question. First of all, we're aware that things that we're noticing in neuroscience now are not new. Uh, we're just discovering them. So they've always been at play. So basically what we're learning is the way the brain operates given certain stimulus. Uh, and given the way the brain operates uh, given certain stimulus, we can then tweak advertising or we can tweak messages in order to get a response that we might, uh, we might be more interested in. I think the, the, best, uh, the best field, or the most lucrative field, the, most, the one that has the most promise for leadership is the, the field of, of empathy and how empathy is actually developed. Uh, and in the late 1980s in, in Italy, they've actually been able to isolate mere neurons. And, and uh, the whole science of mere neurons is now telling us why some of the esoteric sciences of the 60s and 70s worked. For example, neuro-linguistic programming. We didn't know why if we modeled someone's facial expressions, we could perform uh, equal to, their, to them. And NLP was used in, in teaching for a number of years without really understanding what was going on. We now know that when we're having a conversation or we're having a relationship with someone else, that internally we're actually building a model just as though we're having their response. That's actually going on. Now that's most easily seen when you think about babies and the way they learn. They learn through imitation. They mirror, they mimic. Uh, and what's going on in a baby's brain, literally, is that when the mother smiles, the baby's mirror neurons fire to create the pattern that's exactly the same as it would be if he were smiling himself or she were smiling. And then he learns very quickly that when the mother smiles, he's supposed to smile, and that ha that's how we learn. Uh, what we're learning now is that the brain is much more plastic than we thought, and that we actually have this capability and continue to have this capability throughout life. So as you and I are sitting here doing this interview, uh, if we're paying attention to one another, we're actually building models within ourselves that mirror what's going on on the other side of the room. That's terribly important when you think about how we develop the capability of understanding what someone else is thinking or how they're feeling. So that's one area. Second area is the understanding of implicit memory versus explicit memory. We know that the limbic system, which really came into being with the advent of mammals, uh, is the way in which, it's the, it's the part of our brain through which we develop relationships, close relationships. The original application of that, of course, was caring for our young because the mammals had to care for their young. They didn't just lay the eggs and leave. So developing of relationships and, the, and the, the way in which we understand other animals was developed in the limbic system. That's true now, too. The limbic system actually creates implicit patterns for us that we remember. So every experience we have is a reflection of uh, an experience we've already had. We see that pattern first rather than seeing the reality of what we're looking at. So understanding how preconceptions drive most of our human behavior is an important part of leadership. Once we understand that, we're able to short circuit those or to look at implicit memory and develop ways of communicating that will give people a better opportunity of not reacting with their typical, uh, with their typical planned response. Uh, we know that those avenues are largely through the emotional brain so that people respond to story, uh, to image, to symbol in ways that they wouldn't respond to argument. Uh, we know too that we can short circuit uh, implicit memory by uh, certain uh, practices. Uh, a lot of work going on now in the practice of meditation knowing that we only experience something for about 200 milliseconds there is a way in which we can elongate that 200 milliseconds so that we have more time in the present. And that gives us an opportunity then to make more decisions using more of our brain than just responding to our patterns. So these are all ways in which neuroleadership or neuroscience is impacting leadership now. I think those are the forefront. Those are the areas that I think are at the forefront. How do you build empathy? And how do you elongate your moments of presence so that you can actually have a better response, more appropriate response than you would have if you were just coming from your own experience?